We are at war against COVID-19. Here is General Vincent Nundwe, commander of the Malawi Defense Force, who knows what it takes in terms of discipline to win a war like this. Fellow Malawians, I am General Vincent Nundwe, Malawi Defense Force Commander. As you are all aware, Malawi is currently facing the greatest challenge of our lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has hit us hard. Sadly, we have lost many people. However, there also have been many recoveries. I want to encourage you all to adhere to the laid down preventative measures, which include wearing masks, washing hands, and observing social distance. Together, we shall win this war on COVID-19. May God bless you all. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Pamlambe Special. In this edition, we're going to focus on COVID-19. You are aware that COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc across the nation, across the globe. But here in Malawi, the government, non-governmental organizations, as well as private citizens are being vigilant in ensuring that the impact of COVID-19 is lessened. And so today in the program, I have a guest coming from Save the Children. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Thank you so much. My name is Steve Kantimareka. I'm the Senior Humanitarian Operations and Resilience Manager working with Save the Children. Mm -hmm. So basically within Save the Children, my main role is to uh, coordinate uh, our humanitarian interventions within the organization um, based on the various disasters that happen in Malawi. And in this particular case, we are also responding to COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. So basically Save the Children is a, a, rights, a children rights focused organization which has been operational in Malawi for about 38 years, 38 years now, uh, since we have been operational since 1983. And basically our, our, our main uh, uh, aim is to make sure that uh, as we are doing our interventions, uh, children uh, are surviving mm -hmm. and the children are able to be protected and also have access to quality education in a healthy and safe environment. So here in Malawi, basically, we are focusing on a number of thematic areas, uh, which basically includes um, uh, education, health and nutrition, child protection, child rights, governance, child poverty, or I'll just say food security and livelihoods. Mm -hmm. So these are the main um, focus areas um, within Malawi. So far, what have you seen as uh, major challenges in the response to, pan to the pandemic, specifically um, on the aspect of uh, children? Okay, uh, thanks so much for your, for your question. Maybe just to give you that uh, even in the current wave of COVID, where we have seen um, cases of COVID rising in the country, we have seen that uh, children have been seriously impacted. Um, just to give you an example uh, in the education angle, that we have seen even children in the, in the boarding schools, those that were sampled and tested, uh, maybe around uh, 5,000, uh, closer to half of that tested positive. Mm -hmm. That is quite uh, a big concern. Mm -hmm. We have also seen um, gaps in teachers, um, that there are a lot of gaps on the ground. We don't have enough learning space. And the, there are also lack of uh, uh, PPEs, which are the personal protective uh, equipment for both learners as well as the uh, children. Mm -hmm. And even uh, in the protection um, uh, angle, we have seen because of uh, the pandemic, uh, a lot of uh, teen pregnancies, 
uh, a lot of child marriages. For instance, I think uh, the latest uh, um, rapid assessment that was done, we, it was found out that 40,000 teen pregnancies, 13,000 child uh, marriages have occurred within a space of uh, six months. Those figures are staggering. That is quite concerning. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is the area that uh, Save the Children and all the partners uh, really want to ensure that uh, we bring to an end uh, mm -hmm. to this kind of um, uh, effect, uh, impact. So specific to the question, um, in terms of the, the uh, challenges that are there, I know there are a lot of challenges, but some of the challenges that we have seen as Save the Children uh, basically could be economic, health, education, uh, social, religious, and many other. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen like of uh, PPEs mm -hmm. uh, for the health experts, our staff, the children themselves, and even um, uh, Malawians at large. Uh, we have seen also inadequate number of health, health care workers uh, who are trained to help fight the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, inadequate infrastructure to support the fight against the pandemic, uh, for instance, maybe not having uh, enough isolation centers um, that are equipped with the, all the necessary supplies. Mm -hmm. We have seen lack of awareness about COVID-19 pandemic among the general populace. Uh, in Malawi, and this is quite a big problem as well, mm -hmm. that uh, people think like COVID is not there. So maybe I can't even put a mask or I can't um, um, sanitize or mm -hmm. maybe I can't keep social distance. Mm -hmm. These are quite serious issues uh, that we are having that lack of uh, awareness. And also the disruption of learning as a result of the pandemic is really a big challenge for us as the children. We have also, as I've already indicated earlier on, child protection related uh, issues uh, on the increase, um, like the gender-based violence, uh, early marriages, teen pregnancies, child labor, and even um, alcohol, alcohol and substance abuse. Now, in terms of uh, the support that you're giving to the affected, how are you channeling this support so that it indeed reaches those uh, children or families that are affected? Uh, basically, uh, Save the Children, whatever we are doing, we are doing this in coordination with the, um, the coordination structures that are there. As you might be aware, that the uh, overall coordination is done by the Department of Disaster Management Affairs and other, other structures. So our, our support has been channeled through the relevant like line ministries. For instance, uh, we have been working with the Minister of Health in the various um, healthy facilities mm -hmm. uh, where we have provided a number of uh, um, healthy related suppliers uh, for instance the, the EPPs I've talked that, uh, about um, and the many other um, uh, suppliers so we actually channel these through these uh, um, um, uh, established structures and the engaging the communities uh, at a local level. Mm -hmm. So we believe by doing that at the community level, we have worked with the local leaders, we have worked with structures like the, the area development committees, the, the civil protection committees who have been able, for instance, to provide a lot of awareness um, about the, the disease. So in that way, when the parents and even the children hear these messages, are able to um, respond accordingly and, the, and the change the behavior. Mm -hmm. As Save the Children, you did indicate that uh, you are very interested in uh, child protection issues. So at the moment uh, with COVID-19, it seems most families are spending time at home and um, it has um, come out that uh, some of the children are, are being abused because even the, the parents they are going through some social trauma because of COVID-19. Yes. In terms of uh, dealing with these different abuses that uh, children can uh, undergo during this time, what is Save the Children doing? Uh, thanks so much for your, for your question. As I as said uh, earlier on, our response is basically focusing on a number of thematic areas. We have health, uh, we have wash and nutrition, we have education, child protection, food security, and livelihoods. 
So specific to the question you have asked me, basically what we have been doing, because that falls mainly within the child protection uh, thematic area. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is uh, um, to make sure that uh, we have done uh, some rapid capacity strengthening of the key protection structures. Like for instance, uh, training the social workers uh, who are in touch with the communities on the ground on a number of areas like the, the psychosocial first aid. Uh, we have also done a, a lot of trainings on on psychosocial support services, which we know that as the caregivers or the social workers, they will be able to uh, help these children so that uh, um, the impact is, is lessened. And also these training, trainings have, have helped that in the sense, if he, uh, the child has been abused, there are structures well, um, there are already well-known structures on the ground so they are able to do proper referrals mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the children are supported. And uh, we have uh, supported various initiatives, as I've already said, focusing on the uh, system strengthening, uh, where we have even in other areas uh, revamped or established protection structures uh, so that the, the case management um, is, well, is well done. So, and also we have, uh, as I said earlier, on engaged community and faith uh, leaders to strengthen accurate messaging on, the, on positive parenting and psychosocial support in the homes. Uh, basically, what we have seen is there's a lot of fear out there mm -hmm. about the, con the pandemic, and this has caused a lot of anxiety and panic uh, among children and uh, even uh, older people as well. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, these trainings that we have done um, with they have helped the communities themselves, the faith leaders, to actually now support and encourage the, the children that this is not the end of the day, uh, and the, I mean the end of the world, but uh, rather help them so that that fear goes out, that anxiety goes out, and uh, we make sure that the, the children is living in a, in a peaceful uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe with the, uh, that kind of initiative, together with other stakeholders as well, will be able to make sure that we, we lessen or reduce the issues of abuse that, uh, that are out there. Mm -hmm. It's quite really a concerning um, um, uh, situation, but I think we are there to make sure that this is reduced. Actually, one of the areas that is causing a lot of anxiety <coughs> is uh, the education aspect, because uh, parents are now not sure of what will happen uh, in terms of uh, progression of the education of their children, even the children themselves. Uh, they feel they've stayed at home for long enough. What other interventions can be uh, put forward in the education sector to ensure that even though uh, uh, the children are home, but at least there's progress uh, during their learning? Yeah, thanks so much for your question. And in fact, uh, uh, on education, as I said, this is another area that uh, we are also focusing on, is uh, to make sure that the continuity of learning is there, despite the, the closure of schools. Yes. So what we have done is uh, to continuously uh, provide uh, education technical support, uh, nationally, at district level, and even in the targeted uh, schools, so that we can... Uh, support the COVID-19 prevention and, and, and control in these particular uh, schools, as well as now making sure that uh, um, uh, that continuity is there. So as Save, save the Children, we have been um, supporting uh, radio programs um, where learners have interacted mm -hmm. with, the, with the teachers and also, as you might be aware, there was an online learning uh, which was initiated by Minister of Education. So we have been supporting that kind of process to ensure that uh, um, learners continue learning through that interactive um, 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 uh, learning uh, uh, processes. Okay. And also we have supported various capacity building initiatives to teachers, to school management uh, committees like the mother groups, uh, just to make sure that they are able to support these uh, learners while they are, they are at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we have also tried to ensure that as this is happening, there's, the, there's continued prevention. So we have provided uh, or distributed a lot of PPEs to various schools mm -hmm. uh, and even some uh, mother groups so that they are able to use that, they are able to sanitize while they are supporting the, the children. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, welcome. This is Pam Lambe Special, and today we are featuring Steve Vikam Timaleka, who is a Senior Humanitarian Operations and Resilience Manager at Save the Children. Now, uh, you also spoke of awareness, which is a huge challenge at the moment concerning COVID-19 issues. Sure. Uh, government has just recently announced that they'll be procuring uh, vaccines. Uh, what will be your role in ensuring that a lot of people get motivated to, to get these vaccines? Yeah, this is of course another tricky, <laughs> tricky area. <laughs> and as I said earlier on that, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of uh, information gap out there. And they are save the children, uh, obviously, when, when the government um, uh, decides to roll out uh, that. Our main role obviously will be supporting in terms of the awareness part of it uh, based on what the government is going to, to guide. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there are a number of um, uh, protocols um, that, uh, that the government have uh, put in place so I think uh, we will be um, happy to support the, the awareness part of it mm -hmm. but obviously as we have already indicated uh, that is not within our, um, our domain, but if the government decides to roll it out and there is need for, for sensitization, we will obviously partner with other stakeholders to make sure that we, we support the government uh, on the part of awareness mm -hmm. uh, for, for that rollout. Mm -hmm. sure. You did say that it's a tricky part. How so? Yeah, tricky in the sense that I think uh, globally, uh, a lot of people have um, a lot of uh, what I would call uh, reservations, whether they will go for, for it or not. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying it's a bit, a bit tricky. So uh, that's why I'm saying that if the government decides to roll row, to row it out, uh, I know they would have already done the homework and they would know that uh, their people are, are safe to take that. So obviously we will support the, the, the awareness part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and as, I, as I've already said, it, it's not only more about the, vac the vaccine, honestly speaking. It's more of uh, people mm -hmm. accepting that uh, this pandemic is with us. Because uh, what we have seen is uh, uh, despite some of the, a lot of the uh, awareness that is out there, still we have problems in terms of behavior change. Mm -hmm. So if you go out there, uh, you find that maybe either people are not putting on the masks, which has been one of the key areas that we need to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe if people are putting on masks, then obviously they have put it under their chin. Obviously, mm -hmm. that, that is not helping. And uh, the social distancing has been quite an issue. And uh, issues of uh, sanitizing um, uh, for those that have uh, the privilege to have the sanitizers, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a behavior uh, change issue and the usual issues of behavior change issues cannot just happen within um, uh, overnight. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are thinking as Save the Children, we should continuously providing this particular um, uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. So I think for us the most important thing is to make sure that we change our behavior, mm -hmm. we follow what uh, the Ministry of Health is guiding us in as far as COVID-19 restrictions are concerned. Uh, on the aspect of uh, changing behavior, we have different cultures and traditions that uh, we normally undertake as a people in Malawi. Uh, do you think that perhaps that is another area that should be specifically targeted in terms of awareness because some of the practices uh, could and actually do uh, help in spreading COVID-19? That's what we are actually doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I said in, in our awareness um, um, uh, approach, 
we have engaged several um, stakeholders. And these stakeholders includes the religious leaders, mm -hmm. includes the traditional leaders, it includes um, um, the other community structures. So I th we think that uh, each of these uh, structures have a role uh, to play. So like for instance, uh, the religious uh, leaders are uh, um, believed to be the, the, the ones that uh, um, hold the, the customs. So I think if they do understand um, the, how to prevent this pandemic, mm -hmm. they will be able to um, convey the same to their, to their subjects or to their, to their people. Mm -hmm. Because usually local leaders are well respected out there. So we believe that by engaging them, if they understand what is supposed to be done, we can easily win this fight. Mm -hmm. Sure. At the beginning of the program, you did give uh, very stark and staggering statistics concerning the different um, areas where children have been impacted with COVID-19, child marriages being one of them. Uh, where do we go from here? What we are doing is uh, ensuring that uh, um, we are kind of uh, strengthening the systems because normally within the, the, the protection uh, setup, there are, there are systems that uh, are used to make sure that uh, children are, are, are protected. Mm -hmm. So we believe by strengthening, which we have already done, and we continue doing, uh, strengthen these structures, they will be able to help in terms of sensitizing the communities, in terms of sensitizing the parents. Um, you know, these things, um, it sometimes it, it becomes even very worrying that you find this maybe sexual abuse mm -hmm. or uh, are happening even within the household itself. Yes. So we really need to start this fight right away from the household mm -hmm. going uh, outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, going forward, we would continue doing that. And the, um, I think for us, as Save the Children, we believe that uh, working as a team is very important because there are a number of uh, stakeholders out there. So if we can really join hands and um, work together, uh, our, our belief is that uh, these uh, um, issues will obviously reduce. Finally, probably um, moving forward, what would you want um, our viewers to uh, take home in terms of uh, COVID-19 and everything else that is happening around us? Okay, uh, thanks so much for, for, for that question. Uh, I think for us as Save the Children, uh, uh, first and foremost, we would like to, um, the viewers to know that COVID is real. And because COVID is real, we need to make sure that we follow what the health experts are telling us. And uh, now, considering that uh, children have been heavily impacted, and uh, if we are not careful, because this is our, our second, uh, the next generation, mm -hmm. so if the next generation has been affected in terms of their learning, in terms of their survival, in terms of their protection, then we may be actually heading for, for danger. So basically our plea out there is that uh, we need to um, work hands and uh, I mean work together to ensure that these children are um, actually supported uh, in as far as learning, um, uh, protection, as well as the um, survival is concerned. So we will continue working with the, the various stakeholders, the communities uh, to, to make sure that children are little um, are, are supported and the, we will of course continue also following what uh, the government is guiding us uh, as I said earlier on um, when schools are closed we ensure that uh, learning is continuing mm -hmm. because that's one of our major interests um, we ensure that these children while they are at home they are also protected by, uh, protected by ensuring that uh, um, the communities and the, the social workers are actually supporting them in terms of the, the protection. 
So it's really our, our plea that uh, our viewers and the community out there need to work together to fight against this pandemic. And uh, we are sure ourselves, the children, that uh, we can easily fight this pandemic if we follow to the dot what we are being advised to, to do. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks so much. It's, it's, it was really a privilege to have this uh, opportunity that uh, we could have this uh, discussion on this very important uh, topic. Well, Thanks there so you have it. Uh, that was Mr. Steve Kamtimaleka, who is the Senior Humanitarian Operations and Resilience Manager at Save the Children, telling us what the organization is doing in terms of the various interventions that they have during this COVID-19. Well, this is also where we wrap up this special edition of Pamlambe. Please remember to sanitize, remember to keep the social distance so that we can fight COVID-19 together. My name is Patricia Sundu. Goodbye. We are at war against COVID-19. Here is General Vincent Nundwe, commander of the Malawi Defense Force, who knows what it takes in terms of discipline to win a war like this. Fellow Malawians, I am General Vincent Nundwe, Malawi Defense Force commander. As you are all aware, Malawi is currently facing the greatest challenge of our lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has hit us hard. Sadly, we have lost many people. However, there also have been many recoveries. I want to encourage you all to adhere to the laid down preventative measures, which include wearing masks, washing hands, and observing social distance. Together, we shall win this war on COVID-19. May God bless you all. Thank you.